So let me tell you a story. There was this mother. I mean, this mother, she, was, she had two children. She had a, an 8-year-old and a 10-year-old, and they were literally driving her crazy. I mean, she was telling her next-door neighbor, she says, I'm going to tell you right now, I cannot make it you know, till these boys turn 18. They're driving me crazy already. She says, listen, let me tell you what they did the other day. She said, you know, besides just doing the normal things of breaking the windows and breaking doors and breaking things and leaving the refrigerator doors open and stuff, she said, you know what? They were walking home from town the other day, and some of the neighbor boy left his bike out in the driveway. They stole his bike. He just jumped on his bike and rode it home. I came home, and I'm, I'm walking up, and I'm looking at this bike in the front yard, and I'm saying, where did this bike come from? So I go in, and I said, Tommy, Tommy, where did that bike come from? Well, Billy saw it, and we were tired of walking, so we just took it. You can't do that. That's stealing. Well, we just borrowed it, Mom. And if he wants it bad enough, he'll look and find it, and then he can come and get it. And she says, it's just stuff like that. She says, he, they do it all the time. I just don't know what I'm going to do with them. And the next-door neighbor lady says, well, you know what? We just got a preacher in, and he's new, and I heard he has a counseling degree. And uh, maybe you could call down the church building, and, you know, uh, maybe they'll be able to get an appointment for you. She said, well, that sounds great. So she called down there and she said, uh, you know, look, I'd like to have an appointment for my boys. And, and uh, so the preacher said to her, says, well, listen, bring the youngest one down first and bring him down tomorrow at nine o'clock. She said, okay, I'll be there. So man, nine o'clock in the morning, she was down there and she had little Tommy with her and sat down and they came out and they, you know, talked a little bit. And so the preacher says, mom, just sit right here. I'm going to take Tommy in the office. I want to talk to him. And she says, okay, so took Tommy in the office with him, and Tommy sat down on a chair, and you can imagine a little eight-year-old sitting there, his legs are straight out, and he's just, you know, looking around at the books and all that kind of stuff, and the preacher goes around behind his desk and sits down and just starts staring at him. I mean, he doesn't say a word. He's just staring right at this boy. I mean, boom, boom. All of a sudden, that preacher jumps up, and he says, where's God? That little boy's just sitting there, and he's holding on to the arms of the chair. He, he, he don't know anything. The preacher sits back down and just starts staring at him. I mean, he got eye to eye. He is not letting go of this boy. And he jumped up again. He said, I said, where's God? And Tommy is about white-knuckled as you can get. And all of a sudden, he's sitting there, and he's like, I got to get out of here. And the preacher sits back down. And just start staring at him again. This time when he got up to jump and point the finger at the little boy, the little boy Tommy jumps out of the chair. He runs out, runs past his mom, runs two blocks home, runs, jumps up on the front porch, goes through the front door, goes in the house, and his brother's saying, what's wrong, Tommy? What's wrong? He says, upstairs, our secret hiding place. And he runs up the steps, and there goes Billy right behind him, and he gets in the closet, shuts the door. It's pitch black in there. And Billy said, what's wrong? What's wrong? He says, God's missing, and they think we got him. <laughs> That you know, there's a lot of truth there. Do you know what's wrong with this world? God is missing in people's lives. Now, how many of you remember when God was missing from your life? Listen, I sure remember it. Do you, do you understand? As you become older in your faith and a Christian, and you sometimes sit back and you think, do you know where I would have gone if I would have died in 1974? Straight to hell. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You're straight in hell, buddy, because you were one of the most wicked people that ever walked on the face of the earth. Things you did were horrible, were atrocious. And you know what? It didn't even matter. Suppose I'd only done one thing. I only lied one time. It still would have been a sin. still would have separated me from God. I would have still been on the same track. Because God was missing in my life. And God's been missing. Listen, I, I know some of you. I baptized some of you. Not, not just here in this baptistry, but man, I baptized some of you down in the, in the other place. I took Hummer, Barb and I took Hummer to dinner last night and, and talked to her about, you know, baptizing her and Joe. And I remember the time I baptized. How many remember Gene Hyatt? 
Now, Gene Hyatt was about six foot four, close to 280 pounds. And when I lifted him up out of that water, I caused a tidal wave to just shoot <laughs> down the steps. I mean, there was so much water going down there, it was crazy. But you know what? At least the Lord was in his life from that day on. And the Lord's been in your life from that day on. But I want to tell you something about God. That's, that's why I'm here. Because I'm saved. No, nobody loves me like God does. And I, I want to share that love with you. I want to make sure you know that he loves you. Because it really does. First thing I want to teach you about our Heavenly Father is God the Father hears and answer prayer according to His timetable. Amen? Are you with me? Now, how many have ever prayed a prayer and didn't get it answered the way you wanted, as fast as you wanted it to be answered? <laughs> Good to see you, Amy. It's been a long time. She always had such a sweet smile. Just one of the nicest ladies that I baptized into Christ. But Listen, God answers prayer according to his timetable. And I'm going to tell you how he answers it. He answers it with a yes, he answers it with a no, and then he'll answer it with wait a while. Right? Follow with me. Am I going the wrong way? <laughs> I never get these things right, folks. <laughs> I'm, going the, I'm going the wrong way. See what happens when he, there we go. All right, so let's, let's go to the word of God. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will give him the name John. I don't know what's happening. I'll preach and we'll worry about it later, right? All right. Now, I can tell you this much. I, I know a little bit about the Bible. Just, I know this. How, when, when were the priests able to retire? When they were 50. Just in case you wanted to know that. I know, I know we hear this all the time. Preachers never retire. They just die. No, that's not true. Old Testament priests, they had, according to Numbers, the 8th chapter, you can look this up. I'm, only, I'm not giving you verses. I used to give the book, chapter, and verse. That that's makes you lazy. I'm going to give you the book and the chapter. You read the whole chapter, you'll find the verses. <laughs> that makes you read more, and, and everybody learns more. But in Numbers, the eighth chapter, it'll tell you that the priest started when he was 25, and he had to retire when he was 50. So we know what? Zacharias is not, he's not 50 because he's still doing the priestly work in the temple. All right, and so he's there, and the angel Gabriel is going to come to him, and the angel is going to tell him that, you know, you're going to have a child. Now, how many in here 20 years old? Ah, none. Maybe a couple back here. All right. How many of you are, let me put it this way, how many are married and you're 30 years old? Okay. 40? I will stop right there. <laughs> Now, I know this. When I was younger, we wanted to have a child. And we prayed for a child. And you pray for a child when you're young. You don't pray. Uh, look, I'm 67. I do not pray for children. <laughs> I have had my share, okay? I do not want any more children. I'll take grandchildren. Why? Because I can leave and they stay. Everybody knows that. All right. But when do you think Zacharias and Elizabeth would have prayed for this child? Think of when they were in their 20s, they would have prayed? Most likely. Think they'd have prayed when they were in their 30s? Most likely. Think they'd have prayed when they were in their 40s? Most likely. And you know what? They would have been thinking the whole time. Something's wrong with us. God's not answering our prayer. We're not having a baby. We're not having a baby. We're not having a baby. And finally... When it comes, he, Gabriel, says to Zacharias, you're going to have a son, and you're going to name him John. I guarantee you they had prayed 15, 20, 25 years and got what? 
What answer? Wait a while. I want you to wait a while. I want you to wait a while. How many of you like to wait? <laughs> we went into a restaurant last night. I turned around and walked right back out. Barb says, what's wrong? I said, I'm not waiting that line. I don't like to wait. Okay. I don't, I'll be honest. I don't like to wait in lines. That just bothers. Can you imagine waiting 25 years to have a child? Can you imagine what would have run through your head? Oh, man, God is not going to give me a child. I want a child. He's not going to give me a child. He's not going to give me a child. I'm going to tell you. God's going to give him a child when God is ready when it's according to his timetable so facts about prayer because they're not answered the next day doesn't mean god isn't going to answer them you have to know that you have got to lock that in your brain and take it with you because let me tell you what happens how many have ever heard these words put together unmet expectations do you know that unmet expectations hurts more christians than we would like to realize. Do you understand that unmet expectation in Christians causes them to walk out and leave God and never come back? Can I tell you about the time Dick Hecox and I, my first go at John Hopkins, probably like 1984, 1985, I received a phone call from a preacher in Virginia who told me that an elder... And his son were at the John Hopkins Hospital. And that the son was dying of leukemia and just wanted to know if I would go up and make a visit on him. And so I really didn't know the area because I had just moved here. And so Dick took me to, to the Johns Hopkins, showed me how to park, where to park, and, you know, go through all the rim and roll and, and get to the young man's room. And so we started a friendship with the mom and the dad and the young boy. And every Sunday when one of us would go there and take him communion, he got the biggest smile on his face. I mean, it, it said, Gary, this is what ministry is all about. When you walk in there and this boy's just looking at you and, and smiles at you, and, and then when, before you leave, you say, you have a favorite passage of Scripture you'd like for me to read? And he'd, he'd give you one. Man, we'd just turn and read what passage that he wanted to hear, and, and then I'd hold his hand and say a prayer with him and leave. His mom and his dad were there and they'd, they'd walk out with us and they'd thank us and, you know, man, we really appreciate you coming. Blah, 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 blah. One day the preacher called me and said, Gary, can you get up to the hospital right now? He's taking a turn for the worst. Pew, I was gone. Walked in. Dick was with me as well because I'd called him and told him and he met me and we walked in together. And as we walked in, that little 15-year-old boy had just departed and gone to meet the Lord. And you know what his dad said to me? Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what he said, so hold on. Get the hell out and take your God with you. Which is exactly what he told me. And when I went to say something, he just pointed to the door. You see, God didn't answer his prayer the way he wanted. He had unmet expectations, and he told God, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. I want you to know don't ever let that happen to you. God answers prayer with a yes, no, and sometimes a wait a while. And however he sees fit to answer it, God is God and we're not. Amen? Amen? Don't give up on God ever. All right. Number two. God the Father has a sense of humor. Look what it says. Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know this for, I, for certain? I am an old man, and I'm well advanced in years. So he's like 49 years old. That makes me feel really good. 
If he's an old man and advanced in years and he's 49, whoo, baby. The rest of us are ancient. But I want you to know God has a sense of humor. Now think about it, ladies. Zacharias and Elizabeth... She's going to be pregnant, and she's well advanced in years, too. So let's say that they're the same age. Let's make them both 49. Now, you go to work tomorrow, and the 49-year-old lady there walks in and tells you she's pregnant. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're going to do. You're going to get the biggest smile on your face. You're going to walk away and say, I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> Woo, baby. That's a bad joke you'd be played on you. Right? 49 years old, giving birth to your first child. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't they pray for a child? Didn't they pray for a child? Well, sure they did. Well, God's answering their prayer. Just 25 or 30 years later. But he answers prayer, doesn't he? And that's what I'm trying to tell you. God answers our prayers. And like I said earlier, if you want to make God laugh, just tell him your plans. He'll get a hoot out of that. Because his plans and your plans may not even be close to the same. But let me ask again, who is it that's all-knowing? Who is it that has all wisdom? And what about us? Where do we come in? Uh, Probably way down here. God the Father has a sense of humor, and you and I need to know that. We need to lighten up sometimes. And I, listen, you, you remember me. <laughs> I, I'm the one that said, Aaron Elizabeth Sorago, down front right now, when she was 12 years old, because she was talking, or so I thought she was. I come to find out she really wasn't. Damage done. But she still loves me. Sometimes I was just too rigid. I'm I'm being honest with you. Sometimes I was too rigid, too strict. It had to be, this is the way. This is it. Then the Lord said, straight and narrow. And sometimes a little off to the left, off to the right wouldn't be such a bad trip with it with the lord he does have a sense of humor and so do we need to have one all right we've already talked about him being 50 i already told you that i'm going to just scoop here there's uh, the numbers chapter see i knew it i had it in there all right so men what do you think you'd do at work your buddy comes in and says my wife's pregnant <laughs> How old are you? 49. You're a better man than I am. And we can't wait to talk to our buddies. Did you hear what's going on with Jim? Oh, what's going on with Jim? He's got his wife pregnant. They're 49 years old. Hey. God has a sense of humor. Zacharias and Elizabeth are going to have a baby. And that baby's going to be John the Baptist. Ever notice something about God when you don't get a baby right away? That when you do get the baby, the baby becomes someone very special in the eyes of God. John the Baptist, his mom and dad had to wait a long time for him. But what does Jesus say about him? There has not been one born greater of a woman than John the Baptist. What? Yet he's least in the kingdom of God. How many of you think you're better than John the Baptist? (laughs) We would never even think that. But, you know, in a way we are. Because we have been baptized and we've been washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist never was able to experience that in his baptism. So Jesus was able to say what he said about us. All right. Number three. Now this you need to read realize God has an angel named Gabriel at his service how many know that 
Come on. How many know that God has an angel named Gabriel at his service? Do you know what? If God says to Gabriel, go, you know what Gabriel does? Well, Lord, are you sure you really want me to go now? Maybe tomorrow. Is it tomorrow be a better day for me to go? How many think Gabriel does that? Not a chance in this lifetime would Gabriel ever do that. If God says go, what's Gabriel do? Go. Go. Well, you all understand the word angel? So Zachariah said to the angel, how will I know for cert- this for certain? For I am an old man, and my wife was well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. I am, a- I am Gabriel, the angel who stands in the presence of God. I get to do whatever God asked me to do. And he's excited about that. And so should we. Because you know what? We're angels in the presence of God. I'm going to show you. I'm going to skip that. Angelos is the Greek word. It means messenger. See, two G's in the Greek alphabet, when you put them together, give you an N-G sound. So that's how we end up with the word angel, A-N-G-E-L. Angelos, angel. But see, you don't know what the meaning is. Because too many times all we have done is transliterate a Greek word. What that means is you take Greek letters and you give them English letter equivalents, but you haven't translated it. When you see the word angel in the Bible, every time you see it, read it this way from now on. Messenger, 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 messenger. Because now you and I are God's angels. What? What? You're, gonna call, you're calling me an angel? Yes. Linda, do you call Bob an angel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do now. From this day forward, I'm going to call him angel. And you can call her angel. Because both of you are messengers. We're messengers of God. We're just like Gabriel. Every time God tells us to go, we do what? Really? (laughs) Now listen, if you said go and you don't go, you know what that's called? A lie. Not good. Okay? But listen to me. me. Let me tell you, where's Rick? I had a dream for this building. It's not being fulfilled. I saw this building completely filled to capacity and three services, just like we had three services at the other place. And if this would hold 500, I saw us at 1,500 people per week. Anything wrong with that goal? Wouldn't you like to see 1,500 people coming in here every week, worshiping the Lord, praising God, changing people? Listen, this world, we, we complain about it. I complain about it. I, I hate that you turn the news on and it's all bad. There, there's nothing good about that. And I can tell you who's doing it, the people who do not have God in their life. Angelos, we're messengers. You and I are God's messengers. God is missing in people's lives. It is our privilege. Did, did you see that? How many think it's a privilege to tell someone about Jesus Christ? Now, she's not here today, I know, because she's at the wedding. But I, I was showing my wife today as we were driving up here. I said, there's the laundromat where Hetty worked. I used to go in there and take my clothes when I wasn't taking them out to D's. And uh, Hetty just had this bubbly personality. Really? You, I mean, no heady. So you, you know I'm telling you the truth, right? So I told her, I said, you know, you need to come to work for me. And she says, well, where's that at? I said, tomorrow's Hope Child Care. You need to come down and, and work. She said, well, how much do you pay? I said, how much you need? <laughs> and so we talked price. We met, I told her, she, she came to work for us. Well, then 
Not only did she come to work for us, but we baptized her into Christ, and we baptized Larry into Christ, and we baptized Rochetta into Christ, and a whole bunch of other people we baptized into Christ. You know what she said? She said, well, what do you want me to do at this daycare? I said, I want you to stand at the front door and greet people. I said, everybody that comes in, I just want you to say hi to them. Just smile at them, you know, tell them glad to see them. Say, say good morning. Just be you. Just be heady. And you know what? She did. She stood there, and you know what my daycare did? Grew. Grew. Went all the way to the very top because we had a Maryland license, and the Maryland State Board said, you can go to 88. Guess where we went? 88. Went right to the very top. Now, it didn't happen overnight, but it happened because someone like Hetty who we won to the Lord, who just has a bubbly personality, just talk to people, and then the people would, the parents would come. We had one lady start crying. And someone said, what are you crying about? I said, my little baby just ran off and went right to the room and doesn't even need me anymore. You know why the little baby ran right to the room? Because he spent five days a week there going to daycare. He knew that, he knew that building. He knew that room. It didn't frighten him at all. He just ran right in there. Well, mom didn't want that. Mom liked it when he, oh, no, no, I don't want to go in there. Oh, it's okay. You go in there. No, I want to stay with you. Mom loved that. But the little boy said, I don't need that anymore. I'm going into my room. See you, Mom. Bye. Have a good day. Isn't it neat to be a messenger of God? How many? Now, you don't have to raise your hand on this one. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. I just, I just want you to think about this one. How many have ever had a conversation with someone? about the Lord Jesus Christ. And when it was all over, said, and done, they said yes, and you baptized them into Christ. Don't, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not looking. But I can tell you this much. That's what you want to do. Anybody know what this is? No, because you've never seen it. I can tell you what it is. It's my questions for my oldest granddaughter. I'm going to be with Zoe and Ryder and Gracie and them, Aaron, Carrie next week. Ryder turns 12 or 11 on the 12th. But I've already told Aaron, look, I need, I want time with Zoe. She's 17. Zoe needs to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about Jesus Christ with her pap. And I've got questions to ask her to lead her to Jesus Christ. She's 17. At 17, she knows right from wrong, doesn't she? Yeah. She knows. She's ready to make the decision. And I'm ready to take her on the trip. Now, I don't have to be the one to baptize her. That could be something for her mom and dad. That's fine with me. But, man, just give me the opportunity. Let me be the messenger. Let me be someone that God allows the words to come out of my mouth and into my granddaughter, my first grandchild's years. And, man, if she says, yes, she wants to be baptized, whoo, guess where I'm going to be? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be in seventh heaven. I'm going to be floating you will not be able to talk to me for a month. <laughs> How about you? Talbot, you told me you just became a granddad. Can you wait for the day where you get to talk to your grandson, right? Grandson about Jesus Christ. Listen, sometimes we understand that kids don't listen to mom and dads, right? Let's just be honest. Sometimes kids don't listen to mom and dad. But man, they listen to grandparents. I tell you, my, my grandkids, you saw the thing. My grandson and I out there on that tube, he loves his pap. He, he thinks that pap can't do any wrong. Oh, boy. <laughs> but you know one thing they all know about me? Pap will never lie to us. So why not take someone who will never lie to you and then use that person to tell them about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So that's what I want to do. All right, fourth. 
I'm going to get you out of here. God does like people. Now, this sounds like, what? No, you really need to read this. You need to let this sink in. The angel said to her, now we're talking to Mary, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. In other words, Gabriel again is saying, you are liked. God likes you, Mary. How many, how many of you, you know, oh yeah, I love him in the Lord. We, we, have, we know we have to say that. Oh, I, I love him in the Lord. But we, would you like to sit down and have a meal with him? No. Nope. Would you like to go to the ball game with him? No. Nope. But I love him in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I want you to know that Mary found favor with the Lord. In other words, the Lord liked her. Now, how many of you know someone you like? I mean, you really like it. You like to invite them over. You like to go out with them. You like to, you just like being around them. Anybody, when I say that, does someone come to your mind? Is there someone that you like to just be with? Because they make you smile. They make you happy. They, they just do things that you like. Listen to me. God likes us. He, he, he wants to hang with us. Serious. God just wants to hang with us. How many of you had a best buddy growing up? You guys just, I mean, you were inseparable. You just, you hung out. You got up in the morning, you knew what you were going to do. You're going to call him. Hey, what are we going to do today? I don't know. Let's just hang out. Boom, you're hanging out. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. We're going to hang out. I want you to know, didn't mean to walk in front of you. I want you to know you can hang out with God. You can just hang out with Him. You can be His friend. I want you to know that if there's something that's got you perplexed, puzzled, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to do it, you don't know where to go, I want you to know you could just sit down and say, God, I need to talk to you. I just need a friend, God. Listen, wouldn't you want someone to do that with you? How about about if someone just comes to you and says, can I have five minutes of your time? What would you do if someone just said, can I have five minutes of your time? Just need five minutes. You're going to say, I'm too busy? I hope not. Because I'm going to tell you what, I had that happen to me one time. Really, I had something that was very, very important. It was heavy on my heart. And I went to this brother in the Lord, and I told him, and he goes, he kept looking at his watch. And I said, you got to go somewhere. He says, yeah, I really do. And he walked out. God's got time for us because he likes us. See, too many of us, we don't think that. If I ask you, does God love you, you say yes, and you do what? Quote, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Yeah, but if I ask you, does God like you, what would you say? Eh, probably not every day. <laughs> now, I'm going to beg to differ with you there. I'm going to bet you a million dollars God likes you every day. He might not like everything you do, but he likes you every day. I want you to know that God says, hey, man, here's a seat. Come on, sit down. Tell me about it. What's going on in your life? How many are grandparents? If your grandchild comes to you and says, me, ma, mommy, daddy, pappy, whatever, whatever your handle is, if they, can I talk to you? What are you going to say? Yeah. Not right now. Now, that's what we say to our kids. <laughs> yeah. Hurts, doesn't it? Hey, I, I was there. Trust me, I was there. But I want you to know that God 
is like our grandparent who will listen to us at any time, anywhere, about anything. If you've got something that's on your heart, talk to him about it. And if you pray to him about it and you didn't get the answer tomorrow, guess what? Wait a while. Because 25 years later, Zacharias and Elizabeth got the answer to their prayer. Amen? All right, let's close. Move fast here. I don't know why it keeps going back that way. I have no clue. I'm trying to get to the end. There we go. Thank you very much. God, number one, these are takeaways. I didn't used to preach this way, but uh, this is, I, I've changed my style a little bit. Number one, God will answer your prayers. Amen? Amen. I want to, if, if you say, what was Gary's message about today? It's he wants us to know that God answers prayer. He says yes, no, and wait a while. God answers our prayer. Number two, God has a sense of humor. I want you going out of here. I want you to try to make people laugh. I know it's going to be harder for some than others, but you know what? Try to make people laugh. Let let people see that you are a Christian who has a sense of humor, and you got a smile on your face. And the reason you got a smile on your face is because Jesus Christ flat right out forgave you of all your sins, and you should be the happiest man and woman on the face of the earth. Nothing should make you frown knowing your sins are forgiven, washed and covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Number three. God has angels to bring us the answers to our prayers. Think about that. Let let that just sink in. God has angels to bring us the answers to our prayers. If you haven't received the answer to your prayer, it doesn't mean it's no. It just might mean it's not the time. And then number four, I want you to know God likes you and he loves you. And the reason I know he loves you is because Jesus Christ left the glories of heaven, put on a fleshly human body, and he lived a perfect, sinless life. He died on the cross of Calvary. He did not come down when he could have come down, or he could have called a legion of angels, which always makes me laugh. A legion? A legion? He, you know how many angels he could have called? One! One! Right? A legion? Why a legion? Hey, you call a legion if you've got some tough guys that are really out there that can do something to you. I don't have any tough guys like that in the world. We'll just send one angel. I guarantee you, he could wipe out all 7 billion of the population of earth right now today. 7 billion, one angel, gone. I'm putting my money on the one angel, wouldn't you? What are you going to do to him? You, you can't shoot him. You can't hit him with a bomb. You can't blow him up. You can't do anything to him. How are you going to win? You're not. So I want you to know God not only likes us, he loves us. And that's the truth. Because in my ministry, I really want to hit on the likes. Because I've had a lot of people tell me, I know he loves me, but he don't like me. God just doesn't like me. I want you to know that's baloney. I want you to know where you got that was from the devil. You've never, ever got that from the Word of God. And you need to separate lies from truth. Amen? You need to know the difference between a lie and truth. And if you say God doesn't like you, I say you're wrong. I say Mary found favor. Mary was liked by God. Why? Because she was a nice person. Because she was honoring her mother and father. She was doing what the Ten Commandments would have said to do. And you know what? We can be the same. We can be the same. Just just be honest. Now, I don't know your stance politically, and I don't care, and I know I shouldn't even bring this up. But you know, that Kavanaugh thing was so bad because people just lied. It's, It's being proven now that people just told lies. Do you not understand one of the Ten Commandments is to not bear false witness against another person? And they were bearing false witness? They shouldn't have done that. That was awful. I, I was saddened to be an American. I was, I'll be honest, when I sat there, I was thinking, I am so glad I am a citizen of heaven. 
Because the citizen of heaven, we won't have to hear stuff like this. There's nobody going to do that. So, all right, I'm done. I, I love you guys. God likes you, and please don't ever forget that. He likes you. I know he loves you, but I want, I'm driving it home. Boom, boom, boom. I want you to go out of here and know, you know what? God likes me. Because sometimes you don't like yourself, and that's a fault that I want you to switch. I want you to like yourself. Love others and love yourself. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your children sitting here today. And I thank you for the honor that you are giving me to be able to talk to them. I I love them. I pray that uh, I've helped them to know you better because you are a great God. And I just, uh, I am very thankful that you've worked in my life. You've changed me and you've allowed me uh, to be different. You've allowed me to be on the road that leads to eternity with you, Father. Bless everyone that's here. If they, they have a prayer, Lord, just allow them to know that you're on it. You see it. You've heard it. You're taking care of it. In Jesus' name, amen.